So a lot of times when we look at newer video cards, we tend to look at the previous generation and see just what that incremental step has gotten us. But all too often, we kind of tend to forget how far we may have come. In this video, we're gonna take a look at an older generation of GPU against a current generation of GPU from the same class, and we're gonna see just how far things have come. We're specifically looking at the mainstream market, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at the G4 side of things. In the next video, we'll look at the Radeon side and see how things have changed there. But right now, we're taking a look at the GTX 660 Ti versus the GTX 1060 six gigabyte to see how far things have come. Taking things all the way back to the year 2012, we take a look at the first line of graphics cards from when Nvidia introduced their 28 nanometer architecture. With this particular card we're looking at is the GTX 660 Ti. Features a cut down variant of the GK104 architecture with 1,344 CUDA cores with a boost clock of 980 megahertz with GPU boost version one, rocking two gigabytes of GDDR5 at six gigabits per second on a 192 bit bus. This card featured a 150 watt TDP that was delivered via two six pin adapters. And this particular card also could support all the way up to three way SLI. Now bringing things back to the modern day in the year 2016, we have the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB, particularly the day we've got the Founders Edition. Now this is a 16 nanometer, so we're going from 28 down to 16, featuring the GP106 core. So Pascal here with 1280 CUDA cores, all the way up to a 1708 megahertz boost clock thanks to GPU Boost 3.0. And instead of two gigs, now we now have six gigabytes of GDDR5 at eight gigabits per second on a still 192 bit bus. However, this go around, we've dropped to a 120 watt TDP and only requires one six pin. And unfortunately for this model, there is no SLI support. So how does Kepler to Pascal change things? Well, before we jump into those benchmark results, we're gonna take a look at the system that we're using. We're rocking an i5-6600K at 4.5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz G-Skill Trident Z RAM on a gigabyte Z170 LMX Gaming 5 motherboard. Now, that's what we've run this. And for these tests, we're actually just taking a look at the average frame rates. We're not necessarily worried about the minimums or the 1% lows because we're just getting an idea of how things have progress where we were and where we are now. So without further ado, let's jump into these benchmarks, take a look at those, and then we'll see you guys in the conclusion. Well, now that you've seen the benchmarks for the games, what about power draw and temperatures? Well, you see here that the power draw is a little bit lower on Pascal with one card and just a little bit cooler as well. Now, something very interesting to take here is you look at the performance numbers of where we were and where we are now. A lot of people could attribute a lot of that to the VRAM, but the reality is this is where the mainstream was and this is where it is today. Now, if you do the scaling and the numbers right, it would take roughly three GTX 660 Ti's to equal one GTX 1060. So that's quite impressive, especially when you take into that power draw number. You're looking at nearly three-way scaling performance with one card versus the three of the older generation, and you're only power you're 
using less power than you were with one of those. So it's interesting to see how far we have come in the past four years and maybe get an idea of how far we could go into the future. Of course, we can't SLI the 1060 to get any kind of idea on that, but Regardless, that's how it stands. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video informative or entertaining, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in the next one.